Hey, I'm Kev Kev, Mr. Cohen. Welcome back to MotoGP 17 and the Rider Quiz. Patrick McDonald is on the edge of getting the Moto2 title. Can he get over the finish line in Japan? Let's see, he goes round the Tring Ring Motegi circuit. About to do two qualifying laps. And his speed up, which has proved to be a very good bike in Misano. And now we're gone. And just like the KTM, he is just. Fitted like a glove on it as Patrick McDonald's. We go to the right fly ray races right at the end of the season though. Three rounds beginning here in Japan. And then we head off to Australia. And this is the first chance for Patrick McDonald to grab the title. They need to win the race and hope more that he doesn't finish on the podium. If I got my maths correct. And then he is your Moto2 champion. But there's been a dominant season from him. He's won the most races by a country mile. He's rarely finished off the podium. I believe it's only been three times this season in Qatar. In Argentina, was it? No, it wasn't Argentina. It was Jerez. And then at KTM's home round when he was with the team. And the Red Bull Ring. That's why like being in charge of that race, you should have won that race. In, K in Qatar, not as good from him. I was never really in with a chance of grabbing the victory. Maybe a podium if he kept it clean, but of course he didn't. And then the same with Arez, he should have been right up there. But made mistakes. And so dropped back. So let's see if we can keep it clean this time around. But when he has finished, he has mostly won. I believe only one time when he's finished on the podium, he hasn't won. And that was in Argentina when he finished a fantastic second. I'd have been down the order on the opening lap. All its way through the field. Well, it's only a second by Morbidelli at the end. That's definitely not far behind his main title rival. And defending champion, but for how much longer? As Madonna completes his first time that. 53 3. Decent that time has outcome the other contenders. Let's see what he can do in his second that. Now he wants to dip into the 52s, maybe into the 51s. We'll see if he can get it hooked up a bit better this time around. Be a bit more aggressive into the corners under braking. Hook up these apexes. There's all the rear tire trying to get away, and there you go, Valdezari 52 4. And he's normally on the second or third row, so that shows you how far off McDonald is. He's going to be mid pack if he continues where he is with this qualifying effort. He messes up on this one. So far, isn't Orange first sector. Oh, over the curb in the second, though, no, but still Orange. Got four tenths behind Baldazari. As he's closing up to an Interetta machine in front. Could be any of them. Looks like it's the Spaniard though. That clear white helmet. He goes slightly wide into the left hand. Again a bit ragged in the middle of the sector of this lap McDonald. And nice and smoothly picked up for the back straight. It's like a Garmin, the home hero does the fastest out now, 52-4. It's almost six tenths behind the Japanese riders. Going orange everywhere. Time-wise, this is not a good lap for him. And there is Marcus into the 51s, 51-9. For the Mark VDS machine. So it goes slightly wide in the left. Then into the right, gets into. It's all kind of uses him as a break there. Will that cost him time as he approaches the line? He'll be in the 52s, 52 7. As he ends up roughly a second of the pace in the middle of the third row alongside Nakagami and Shirota Visabi in 10th. Wow, it's Thomas Lucy grabbing the pole by 15 thousandths of a second ahead of Morbidelli with Alex Marcus a further 6 thousandths of a second back. Then we've got Olivia Pacini and Baldassari. On the second row, and we've got Eco right at the back. So, can Patrick McDonald grab the title in the race? 
As we nick at the grid, we've used the suspects right at the front, apart from Patrick McDonald in the middle of the third row, alongside home hero Nakagami. Got to watch out for Shirota as well on that opening lap. And then looking further back, you've got the likes of Surin in 17th as there is Corsi in 23rd. And then we've got Pisani on the 10th row, used suspects on the back row. So here's Patrick McDonald revving up the engine wait for the lights up here. And go out for this six out race. That's a very good start. Baldazari a bit slow away. So is Pacini. And on looking to the outside. Oh, he's outbraked himself slightly. Might be forced back into the mid back. But at the moment, he's down to 10th. He's only lost a couple of positions. As he's going alongside. He looks like Marini on the inside. And on trying to go around the outside of him. And Nakagami. That's Shirota. Going to slow in up the Japanese rider. So now Marini down the inside. McDonald on the outside. Not working. He's got Xavi ahead of bag nine. Four twelve behind. We've got Danny Kent going for a top ten. So here goes McDonald. Here goes bag nine. And oh! There goes Nakagami. So it makes it three wide. With Marini. They somehow all survive. Nakagami drops back down to outside of the top ten. As Badai goes into it. The Mark VDS, the VR46 machine, the Mark VDS machines are 1 2 at the top. This is McDonald behind his former teammate Shirota. Nudging his way down the inside of the German. Up into 7th, is he? No. Couldn't get the power down on the exit. Suter sees the opportunity to get back by the speed up. Remember, they're in a championship battle as well. Suter in 5th, speed up in 4th. We're looking to catch up Tech 3 in third with McDonald on board. As we've got Baldazaria second in front. Got Shotta with the slip Juno heading into the right hand. Uh, oh, and here comes Serena. Here comes Bagnaya with a very ambitious dive from the Italian. It's Akita ahead of Nakagami for 11th. Japanese rider after this clash with McDonald just falling through the field. So here goes McDonald looking to the outside of Marini. He gets down the inside of the Shirota. Madonna with a great exit. Good slit stream off the Italian as Morbidelli leads ahead of Marcus onto the second lap. Here goes Madonna down the inside of Marini for seventh in the first couple of corners. Has he made it stick on the Italian? Here comes back the number 10. And just like the number 70 has hailed him off. Does he go into the left hand? Can he hook up the apex? Run slightly wide, losing the rear end slightly. That's allowed Marini to go back down his inside. Here comes Shirota as well. Onto the nudge his way by. Not quite able to do it. So he's got a superb slit stream heading into the hairpin. Looking to the inside of Marini, but the time just holds him off. Good back night up into ninth. Finally, one of his desperate dives is working as lose the up tough bird ahead of the Vieira. Got a good battle for the podium. Got a good battle for seventh. So it eases down Marini into the left. Holds it into the right. As he finally dispatched the Italian as the top six are getting away slightly. Look at that. Over a second in front. Don't look to make up that gap now on his speed up. He's got clean air. He hasn't got Marini hounding him, it looks like. So you can just concentrate on catching the riders in front. As Jorge Navarro down from 20 sip, the Spaniard on the Casino machine. Not having a good time of it. As there is a 1.2 second gap for McDonald to make up. On Baldassari and Pacini, the Italians, and he's got Mourinho behind. He's very much in an Italian sandwich and Bagnaia as well. We've got thick crusts on this sandwich to go through the final chicane. Nice and smooth from McDonald. As he approached the third out of this race, moved over another fast out 53 2. Well, with a 53 6, though, not far off the pace of the Mark VDS machine. And that, that, despite having a bit of a battle with Marini for half of it. As oh, Isaac Vinal is down from 22nd. The spelling normally so good, so consistent, so upright as well. well he's down for once. It's all Bagnaia up to 8th ahead of Marini behind, the Italian falling. Just like Bagnaia did after his incident with McDonald. As he gains a couple of tents on Dadazai in front. 
Oh, but goes wide into the hairpin. Not very good at all. Maybe he just sensed that Magnaia was behind. He was like, he's probably going to try and dive me, isn't he? So gave him as much room as possible. That's cost him that couple of tenths he had made up. He's still got Bagnar half a second behind, so the Italian. Still within touching distance. The Kenyan. It's about to say all over the back of Pacini in front. As it's spread out in the top six, you can see even third and fourth with Luti and Olivier. Not exactly knows to tell. Just not able to get the power down this race. Made up a tenth on Baldessari, but still Bagnai half a second behind. He might get some slipstream, you tell him. Down this back straight, and McDonald outbreaks himself. Almost into the dirt. But he does hold on to seventh. This has not been a good lap at all in clean air. Thought it closed up to about look at even wide in the final chicane. Can't get the power down. Bike is not very good at all this race. And here comes Bagnaia, the Italian. As Olivier does the fastest out of that previous lap. 53 1 and all. Bagnaia diving into McDonald's. That would give some of his treatment back there. Very clumsy. And the VR46 machine. As we're into the second half of this race. McDonald having a bit of a fight over seventh. As he breaks himself into. The double left. This is his time to shine normally in the middle part of the race, but that further that was terrible. And he's not having a good start to this lap. Over two seconds of Iron Baldessari now. As he hooks on the apex of that hairpin. Very important with Bagnaia behind, right on his tail. So that's much better into the right. Better into the left. He's gained back a couple of tenths. He's got a bit of breathing room to Bagnaia behind as well. As you can see, Luti's dropping back into the clutches of Pacini and Baldessari. Of Olivier trying to catch Marcus and Morbidelli. And in fact, he looks like he's on the back of the Spaniard's tail for a second. It's Baldessari right in the tail of Pacini as well. So Donald pushing hard this, that. It's not coming to him though. He's just gained a couple of tenths on Baldessari. He needs to row much better than the last couple of laps. He's going to grab a top five as Olivier grabs second from Marcus and Bagnaia with a desperate dive into the right hand. We should have seen that coming. Sam been doing that all race long. Much better final chicane though from McDonald. We should have, have some breathing room heading on to the penultimate lap of the race. He's back into the mid 53s. No, he's gained six tenths on Bowder's eye. He's now battling with Pacini for fifth. So there you go, McDonald. This is all that to shine. And again on the battling Italians in front. As Mutegi, normally a good circuit for Patrick, but. Not having a good visit here in the dry. Normally it's been wet round here. Maybe that explains it. But for once, very dry round here. He's got almost a second gap behind. Doesn't have to watch out in... Well, a Bagnaia special. He's about to say up to fifth ahead of Pacini. Good move from the younger Italian on the veteran. And here comes McDonald. He's gaining invisibly, you can see. Much smoother ride in this lap. Now on his marks as well, braking wise. Able to get the power down mostly. Well, nice and smooth. Once again, not able to get the power down smoothly though for his back straight. So he's only a second behind for seeing. He got over a second gap behind to Bagnaia. Well, it's cost himself some time down this back straight. Not being able to get the power down. There's all Bassini having a fight with Baldessari. And that's all he's doing well to keep. Let's throw a countryman behind. But here comes McDonald as we go on to the final lap. 
Free Ray Battle for fifth on the cards. As he dips into the 52s, 52 9. That's more like it from McDonald. Fastest after the race. Finally showing his true pace around here. As the tyres front around half worn, rear barely worn, only around a quarter. So he's kept his tyres in good nick. And now he's chasing his top five. As he's losing some points to Morbidelli, the Italian can drag this on to Malaysia at this rate. If he gets a good result in Australia. As he's winning, McDonald down in 7th, losing around 15 points off the top of my head. Got with close to two, ra two race wins, or up just under it. So McDonald right behind Pacini now. Oh, Italian a bit slow into the left hander. Donald can't get on the power though, look at that, he's losing again out of the corner. Just when he needs to be winning. Oh, but Pacini left the door open on the inside there. McDonald takes back. Sit place. Which he last had for a brief moment on the opening that into that first corner. But half a second behind Baldazar, it had to be a special move to grab back. Fifth. To grab a top five. Maybe into final chicane. He's got Pacini right in his tail. Trying to knit down the inside of Baldazar and just not going to work for McDonald. Maybe slipstream to the line as Morbidelli wins in Japan. And McDonald down in Sith. Not a good race, but still very good points as he did the fastest lap. Just couldn't get into a rhythm until those final couple of laps. Struggle getting the power down all race long as well. As he's 4.5 seconds behind his rival with the Vieira in second ahead of Marcus. Great ride once again from the Portuguese rider with Lutin fourth. And he got Pacini seven, Bagnaia eight, Marini ninth, Savi in tenth, Corto eleventh, Agatha twelve, Pons thirteenth, Schrotter fourteenth, and Garner Graven the final point just ahead of Corsi. But a few tenths of a second with Jorge Navarro at the back by Country Mall. So in the championship, McDonald leads by 44 points ahead of Mormo Daddy. Still a very comfortable lead with just three rounds remaining. 75 points to play for, but Mormo Daddy could drag this championship on, as I said, for another round. If he just finishes behind McDonald in Australia, if McDonald wins, that championship will go to Malaysia. He would have liked to have, of course, finished it here. In Japan, has who got Marcus seven points behind his teammate, 19 ahead of Oliviera. With Lucy back into the top five by a single point ahead of Pacini. That will be settled in Valencia, won't it? That battle for the top five position. And then we've got Balazari just a further 10 points back, trying to get involved in that battle. Then we've got Shorter up to 16th ahead of Remy Gardner by a single point. And then further back, you've got Manzi up to 27th ahead of Hernandez. Bassani, Edgar Pons with Pauline 31st, Eco up to 32nd ahead of Locatelli. So speed up 16 points behind Tech 3 in for 26 ahead of Suta. While Cadex are 53 points ahead of KTM. They could wrap up the title next time out in Australia. As he still earned reputation, did Patrick McDonald? But it was not the result he wanted as he only finished off the podium for the fourth time this season. Can he get back on it? in Phillip Island. So here we are down under in Australia. Around this beautiful Phillip Island circuit. Two core for laps from Patrick McDonald on his speed up. And a bit wide in the first corner. And you think he's going wide in the second but no. Late apex in this corner. And a bit tight on the exit as well than you expect. But after the disappointment in Japan, he needs to win. Hope Morbid Eddie finishes in third, then he's won the championship. If he finishes in second, he needs Morbid Eddie to finish outside of the top five. If my maths is correct. There's all he really slides it into the left hand. I expect to see that a lot around it. The high speeds. And the undulation, so. For Patrick McDonald, championship still very much in his hands. Just disappointed, it's having to drag on a bit. 
as maybe he didn't expect to get it in Japan, but he didn't expect to lose such a chunk to Morbidelli finishing down in sixth. But it's just decided by that first corner is race. Being too aggressive on the outside, going wide, getting stuck behind Marini, and then not really taking advantage of the clean air until the penultimate lap of the race is all he kicks up the dirt going into the final corner. Might have cost him some time, but he got a smooth exit onto this start finish straight. As it's a 32 7, that's not a good lap time. Need to improve it a bit in the second effort. So it's very much mid pack again. Hopefully, he can get into the top 10 like he did in Japan and not be aggressive into the first couple of corners. You especially want to be aggressive into that first corner. As you see, it's very fast. Just a kink in these bikes. Lifting kink, so. If you go wide there, you're in big trouble. Halfway through his second effort. A bit better than his first one by attempt. Much better breaking into the left hand as well, looking up that apex. Oh, but he's lost time to his previous effort. You can see everyone coming out for their qualifying efforts. So it goes into the left hand and now over the hill. This is where he's so good. Oh, he's going to be so good in the race. He's gained that tenth back. Still not massively fast in his previous effort. Feels like he needs to be. He's going to get a good qualifying slot. He uses all the curb and some. He goes into the final corner, hooking up that apex. Maybe should have shifted up to fourth, then third. Get some engine braking going into the penultimate corner as well, or final corner. This is a 32 5. I should have been so wide, as his first ever would have got him on the second row anyway, but his second effort got him pole on the speed up ahead of Morbidelli and Luti. Vital qualifying there with Marcus in fourth. There we go, fifth Pacini sip. Nakagami, Baldazari, and Shirota then Savi ran out the top 10 with Ika at the back. So, fantastic qualifying. Can you get a good start and hold it in the race? As that number 70 really does suit the speed up as there is Orange Crush in first way ahead with his teammates Corsi and Bassani. As he can further down outside the top 10, you've got to use your suspects everywhere. You've got Remy Garner as well, the home hero on the out throw alongside Corsi and Raffin. As here is Pedro Medor revving up the edge and waiting for lights up here. And go out for this seven that race. Good smooth start, maybe a bit slow in second gear. But he's holding it around the outside. Can he sweep across into the apex? Oh, he tried to. But breaks on that bump. And that's like the Luti around the outside. I'm not trying to hold the inside though, but it means he's gone a bit wide. In the middle of the corner. Gets it all gathered back up though. There's Morbidelli and Marcus jump. Into it a machine. So it's the Mark VDS trins behind McDonald. As we head into the hairpin for the first time. Nicely hits that apex. You can still hear Morbid right on his arse. And oh, he slides a bit wide into the left hander. That's allowed Morbid to have a net down his inside, but McDonald holds it around the arse. And they're going to have a dead level through that split. Now go through the fast right, here comes Morbidet, here comes Marquez. Here comes McDonald though, through the left. Back past the Brazilian, Italian. Now into the right hand, oh he's a bit wide into the hairpin. But he just holds. Off the Mark VDS trins. That's attack one, survived as he goes into the final corner. Drifting a bit wide, gets on the power smoothly enough though. We go down this start from the straight wave to the fans on the right hand side. He's going to the second lap, the seven lap race. And Morbidelli's got some good slit stream heading into the first corner. And oh, he pushes his rival right. Oh, Luti gets past Marquez for third. Gets past Morbidelli for second, maybe held up by McDonald. He's run a bit wide into the second corner. Marcus did the fast down that opening up, 37-7. So 
Some of the speed up is still in the lead, even though Luigi's just a couple of tenths behind and he went pretty wide in that second corner. So you go through the left hand kink. Now break for the hairpin. Oh, snatching the rear slightly. There's all Marcus head of Morbidelli. That would be very good. That would be title wrapped. There's all my dog goes slightly wide again in that left hand. Holds it around the outside. Morbidelli back ahead of Marcus. That's still will be title wrapped up with Luti in second. Let's see if his former teammate can help him out here. And this side, McDonald's just holding back a charge in drain here. A runaway drain. With Lutie leading. And no doubt you've got Oliveira in the mix as well with Morbidelli and Marcus. And maybe they like to Pacini on Baldazzari too. It's going to the final corner. They've done well to hold the lead heading on to the third lap of this race. How much longer can he hold on to it? Because at the moment he's being barraged by everyone behind, but he's got seven tenths of a second lead. Heading into the first corner, he can take it a bit easier. Hit that apex, or more with it, he gets past Luti full second. Madal did the fastest of that previous at 34.5. That's more like it. With the speed up, as he's been very smooth with the tyres, of course. Tyre slightly high around him with the high speeds. And oh, he's down over the bump. His bike is gone. And there you go, he's rejoined in eighth. Has he got a group of six at the front? And you've got Nakagami in seventh as Olivia up to second head of Luti. Luti off the podium now with Marcus ahead of him. Let's see if McDonald can keep going on this bike and catch up to the league he's got Xavi behind he's got Nogami in front by over a second as the area takes the lead ahead of Morbidelli here's McDonald into his favourite corner this left hand sweeper before going downhill into the hairpin again not very good braking well, he's definitely gained on Nakagami at least. Could he maybe even get some slip shoe with the Japanese rider down the start finish straight? It's at least he back into third ahead of Marcus. It's nice he hooked up that last corner as McDonald. With the speed up. Catching the Japanese rider with Olivier leading. Fast as that 34 2. You can see McDonald with that full losing over three seconds. As I get up to 10th ahead of Danny Kent, battled the suitors behind. And now Bagnaio up to 10th ahead of Agata. There's McDonald all over the back of Nakagami. Look at that, we've got a top two breaking away. What well, about for the podium? It's contested by four riders. Let's see if McDonald can survive the bumpy can. Oh, and he's got a superb run on Nakagami. He can go down the inside into the hairpin, can he? He does, he grabs 7th. Had to be aggressive on that move. Had to dispatch Nakagami early and quickly. If he wants to catch up to the top four, top six, the four in front. It's like Riviera and one of the Mark VDS bikes are trying to make a break for it. The top two. Going on riding well halfway through this race. After that fall. Nothing he could really do. Over that bump. Sometimes it catches out, sometimes it doesn't. He's over a second behind Luti. He's now got ahead of Pacini for fifth. But we wonder what Mark VDS bike is stuck in the pack. If it's Morbid Deli, that's very good. If it's not, that's very bad for McDonald. He'd have to finish at least on the podium, maybe. Keep that gap comfortable heading to. Malaysia. As he goes into the first corner, we've got Bagnaya ahead of Zabi behind for ninth. Italian on a charge this race. There he goes. Madonna down the inside, not just Marquez, but the senior as well of Baldazzaro. He jumps the clue up to four. He did the fast at the previous at 33 8. Now we go over the bump, survives it. As it's Morbidelli and Olivia battling for the lead. 
It's the ex-teammates McDonald and Lutie battling for third. Oh, it was until Pasini just dived down the inside of Baldessari and McDonald. The Italian not there in the same treatment happened to him. Nope. We've got Marcus up to sit for hit of Baldessari behind. Not very good for Marcus in the battle for third in the championship with Oliviera. And second as well with his teammate. Well, they're all pretty close behind McDonald. Well, the battle for fifth in the championship is seen right in front with Luti and Pasini. As all McDonald dives down the inside of both of them. They are caught crawling around the hairpin. McDonald very aggressive, but he has to be if he wants to catch up to the top two and win this race. That's a good smooth exit up the final corner. As he go into the Panotta lap of the race, and it's like Morbid Dave's making a move for the lead. It's a 33 5 now from McDonald. Less than a second behind Morbid Daddy. Another fastest lap from the speed up. He's definitely working the middle part of this race. Wasn't in the first few laps, but now it is. You've got Pacini up to fourth ahead of Luti. As I said, important result for the championship. Who finishes fifth in it? This is important for who wins it. So right to tell Morbid Daddy. Maybe he just needs to sit here. Doesn't even need to push it. With if he ever winning. He's only going to be losing four points to the Italian. And he's have a very comfortable lead heading to Malaysia. That's not how McDonald is built. Of course he wants to win. As he's really gained on the top two in this point at like that. And it's definitely a three horse race for the victory here down under in Australia. As all this speed up is flying. As the tyres, pretty good. Half worn on the rear. And third worn on the front. As he tries to sneak down the inside of Morbidelli. And Oliviera into the hairpin. And he's done it. The same move he did to Luti and Pasini. Except a bit cleaner this time. He runs wide on the second corner. But it's ahead of Morbidelli. That's the important thing. Oh, he was. And the Italian just barged his way through in the final corner. As he got into the final lap. The top three could put a blanket over them. As he dips into the 34s, but now he's battling for the win, is McDonald. As he gets a much better first corner, then more Bedelli. He's got Marcus ahead. But Pasini was that into the top five. As McDonald tries to take the lead in the first couple of corners, more Bedelli gets past the Riviera. No. So the top two in the championship are the top two in this race. As he survives the bump on this final lap, halfway through it. He's going to be diving down the inside of Morbid Eddie into the head and he tries. The Italian holds on, it's Baldessari up to fourth ahead of Luti. Oh, the Italian wants to be in that fight for the top five in the championship. They'd be going the right way about it. So Olivia tries to go down the inside of McDonald's. They're not quite working out for well, the KTM. It's now going to speed up past the Canax in front. Tries into the left and oh, Morbidelli not giving any room. But you know how good he is into the hairpin. Dives down the inside of the Italian. And as McDonald grabbed the win and Virtue grabbed the title here in Australia. Just like falling midway through this race, he has battled back. And he's battled wide as well in the final corner. Well, that how Morbidelli had some slipstream heading towards the start finish line. Who's going to win? As he crossed the line, it will be McDonald just ahead of Morbidelli, who is angry with himself after that race. That was a chance for victory. The end, he finishes second by a tenth of a second to McDonald. He was flying after that mistake. And Grouse, a fantastic victory, an important one as well for the championship. With Olivia in third, Baldessari fourth, Luti fifth, Marcus down in sixth, head of Pacini. Then we've got Bagnaya, Savi, Agata rounds out the top ten, the top suitor. Good job from the Swiss rider, head of Marini, Axel Pons. Xavier Simon with his first points of the season for the Belgian veteran. Then Surin and Nakagami grabs the final point, really dropped off the face of the earth. The second half of that race, just ahead of quarter hour by less than a tenth of a second. 
with Corsi not far off as well, with Ika right at the back. So in the championship, medals, virtually got both hands on the tie to Leeds Morbidelli by 49 points with just 50 to play for with Alex Marquez in third, and Oliveira in fourth, 13 points behind the Spaniard, who's 21 points behind his teammate. We've got Luti in for just three points ahead of Pacini and just nine points ahead of Baldazari. With Bagnar in eight, Sabi ninth, and Marini ran out of the top ten. As for about, we've got Agatha up to 12th ahead of Courtois, even at a level on points. And Xavier Simon with his first points of the season up to 22nd ahead of Raffin. There's now 24 wides that score points this season, just nine haven't beginning. With Jorge Navarro in 25th, the Nakashima Manzi, Yoni Hernandez, Axel Bassani, then Akapons, Powerly, and Ika, and Andrea Rocatelli at the back. As in constructor standing, speed up are up to third ahead of Tech 3 by a couple of points. With Suta in fifth, looking consigned to getting the wooden spoon this season. And KTM are 57 points behind the new champions, the reigning champions again, Canex. As there is McDonald's celebrating his Moto2 title, will virtually won it. He definitely was flying in the second half of that race. As a perfect weekend for him. And what a way to bounce back after Japan with his 11th win of the season. Just one other podium in four times he's finished off the podium. Can he finally get over the line and grab the Moto2 title in Malaysia next time out? And there is the season finale in Valencia for Madonna decides what's he going to do for next season. Which MotoGP team will he land at? Find out next time. Southwatch and I'll see you then.